welcome back to Curriculum Cafe, where content is key and education is our focus. So, our new theme for the month of May will be picture books that have won the Caldecott Medal. The first book that we'll be reading is Finding Winnie, The True Story of the World's Most Famous Bear, written by Lindsay Maddock and illustrated by Sophie Blackall. But first, let's learn a bit more about the author, Lindsay Maddock. The author, Lindsay Maddock, was born in Winnipeg, Canada and went to Ryerson University in Toronto, where she studied journalism. She is the great-granddaughter of Harry Colburn, a veterinarian who saved a young bear while on his way to war. The illustrator of this book is Sophie Blackall, an artist who was born in Australia. She has illustrated over 30 picture books, and she currently lives in Brooklyn, New York. Finding Winnie, the true story of the world's most famous bear, won the Caldecott Medal in 2016 for its illustrations by Sophie Blackall. The Caldecott Medal is an award given to the year's most distinguished picture book for children and has been awarded yearly since 1937. It is named after Randolph Caldecott, who was an illustrator in the 1800s. The medal is awarded by the Association for Library Service to Children, which is a part of the American Library Association. Now, let's read Finding Winnie, the true story of the world's most famous bear, written by Lindsay Maddock and illustrated by Sophie Blackall. Could you tell me a story? asked Cole. It's awfully late. It was long past dark and time to be asleep. What kind of story? You know, a true story. One about a bear. We cuddled up close. I'll do my best, I said. A very long time ago, about a hundred years before you were born, there was a veterinarian who lived in Winnipeg. His name was Harry Colborn. A vegetarian, said Cole. Bear doesn't like vegetables. A veterinarian means an animal doctor. I know that, Cole said. That's what I'm going to be when I'm big. If a horse had the hiccups or a cow had a cough, Harry knew how to make them feel just right. Harry's hands were never cold, even in Winnipeg, where winters are so frosty that icicles grow on the insides of your nose. That was just the kind of doctor he was. But a day came when Harry had to say goodbye to Winnipeg. There was a war, far, far away, beyond the end of the country and on the other side of the ocean, and he was going to help. He would be caring for the soldiers' horses. Harry rode east on a train full of other soldiers. He leaned his head against the window, watching the land scroll by, wondering what it would be like to be so far from home. The train rolled right through dinner and over the sunset and around 10 o'clock and into a nap and out the next day until it stopped at a place called White River. Harry decided to stretch his legs. On the train platform was a man on a bench with a baby. A baby, said Cole, annoyed. 